I think had I not done that marathon and had the result then I would have taken a different career path. When I got the opportunity to come and do the 10k and then obviously go to the park afterwards as well, it was like, you know, I was never going to turn that down. You know, sometimes I think the difficult bit is that, especially when you're injured and you can't just get up and go for a run, you're like, what do I do? <laughs> so eight days after Seville Marathon last year, I went up to Cardiff on the indoor track and ran a mile, bouncing the tennis ball on the racket. I'm Josh Griffiths. I 30 years old, um, marathon runner from Wales, uh, run for Swansea and Asics and yeah, did my first marathon in 2017 and steadily since then I've got a little bit quicker over time. Had a bit of an injury problem in the last year or so but coming back to fitness now. You mentioned that injury, I think it's probably a good thing to touch on that straight away um, and then we'll go back a little bit further. What What was the injury, what happened and are you back firing on all cylinders now? So in February of 2022, I ran the Seville Marathon, ran 2.11 and qualified for the World Championships later that year. So then that was all fine. Got into my next block of training, everything started off pretty well. But then about a month out from the Championships, um, so around June time, I could just feel a little bit of a niggle in my quad. Didn't exactly know what it was at the time. But yeah, it turned out to be um, a stress reaction um, in my femur, which is obviously really bad. Um, it was a low grade to start with, so you know, it being the World Championship, I still decided to run. Maybe not the best idea, but I was fully committed to it, so I did that. Uh, it got a little bit worse, but I was you know fully accepted that I was going to have to take some time off after that anyway. Um, so the race didn't quite go to plan because of the injury, but yeah. It, you know, I still managed to run and finish, so that was all right. But took obviously like two months off then for that to heal. Got back into training and was due to run the twenty twenty three London Marathon. So this year is London in April, and I was in Spain in around March time and did the same thing again. So two times stress reaction in my femur. So yeah, I had to have, since then obviously take another long break for it firstly to heal, but then, you know, trainings have to look very different since then, obviously, because there's no point just doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So yeah, a lot more cross training things now to manage things, but I am, yeah, slowly getting back in towards full fitness and my target is to run a spring marathon in 2024. It's a really difficult question to ask, but if if you could have that time again, would you still have gone to the Worlds? Yeah, I think so, because I'd already kind of done the injury. Yeah, I made it worse, but it's not like if I wouldn't have run, I would have been totally fine. I would still have needed a break and stuff anyway, so the issue was already there. Um, yes, I probably prolonged the amount of time I needed off after it, but it was worth it for that race. You know, if it was a different race, you know, maybe something more locally then obviously I wouldn't take that decision but for a world championship you know you never know when you're going to go to another one so it's like you know I'm not going to turn this down. What's it like getting the opportunity to to represent Great Britain and I know you're a very proud Welshman to represent Wales as well getting those those first bibs those first singlets Wales and GB what was that like when you first kind of represented? Yeah I mean it's it's an amazing feeling, obviously, like I think for any kid, doesn't matter what sport you're in, you always want to compete for, you know, Wales, England, Scotland, wherever you're, wherever you're from and, you know, Great Britain and in athletics, that's an option too. You know, when you're a youngster, you have no idea how that could even possibly happen because you see the people on TV and it's like, it's like a different world almost. But then, you know, you get your first maybe junior vest. Uh, running for Wales, which is still obviously a very long way off major championships, but there's just little stepping stones along the way that you kind of need to take. Is you know I think if you're looking from a totally amateur or a youngster's point of view, it seems a million miles away, and it kind of is. But then if you look at the small steps you need to take to get there, it's actually not that far of a journey. You just need to keep progressing through the age groups and stuff. But yeah, to actually then, you know, be able to represent 
Britain or Wales, uh, whether it's World Championship, Commonwealth Games, it's yeah, amazing because you know you've been working really hard to to achieve that. I saw on your Instagram as well, going back to uh, to where you're from with Jack Morgan the other day, captain of Wales at the moment, and kind of going home and seeing seeing what facilities are on offer now. Is that is that like a proud moment for you to go back to to you know these these places and and see where where the where the grassroots came from for you? Yeah, I mean it was nice to go back to my old school. Jack being from there too, and Shane Williams, we've had a pretty good. Uh, yeah, school, not, Hannah not Jones as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, to see the facilities there now compared to what it was like when I was in school, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, I know that I'll do some sessions on that track at some point as well, um, which in the past wasn't an option because it was just like mud. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it'll be nice. And especially for then the youngsters in the local club and the school to get to you know play football on the nice pitch and run around the, well, perfectly brand new track I mean yeah it's amazing in terms of a spring marathon because you mentioned that is the target what what's the thought process that goes behind like choosing the right one so for me I recovered from my injury pretty much July time but I had to take a you know a long steady build up it wasn't like I could go straight back into training and be fit by October November so because of the injury history, I thought, you know, I'll just, I'm not going to do an autumn one. I'm going to wait until the spring so I can, you know, I don't have to rush anything. Training can, you know, look what it needs to look like. And if there are any small setbacks, then I can take the time to deal with them rather than, you know, having the time pressure of being like, I've just got to push through a marathon in a month, um, which I would have probably done in the past. So, yeah, you know, having a bit more time to, just do things properly and make sure I'm not rushing any of the recovery, building the mileage too quickly or anything. That was like step one for me because it was obviously really important. I don't want to get injured again. So yeah, that was the the first bit, making sure that the timing of it was right. And then the second part, choosing which one to do. I mean, it's different for everyone. Some people will have like their kind of dream races, whether it's London, New York, whatever. Other people want to chase a fast time, you know, lots of different motivations to do different marathons. But for me, I just want to get back racing in a, you know, good race, big field, that kind of thing. Whether it's London or something a little bit different, we'll see. But yeah, I just want to be back racing at my best really in the spring. Is that is that the goal, just to be back racing or is there, you know, a, a time goal on it as well? I'll narrow in on the time goal a little bit closer to the time. You know, I think I'll do some prep races, which will be a bit more specific in like February, March time. And that'll really narrow in um, the kind of goal. You know, I think doing a half marathon is a great kind of thing to set you up for the marathon. It gives you a really good idea of what you could potentially run, which is often faster than you may have thought. Um, Or, you know, it just uh, tells you what you need to do in the last maybe month of training just to work on those little things which are going to make you better on race day but yeah you know I do have a kind of time in mind but at the same time you know I've missed the last two start lines I was supposed to be on I barely made it to the finish line of the one before so for me it's just really important to get to the start fit healthy and then enjoy the race and race well. I know slightly different to to the marathon and to a major marathon, but you were with us at Alton Towers not too long ago with A6, um, racing the 10k, winning the 10k. What was that? What was that experience like? Because I knew I know you were in the new uh, Nova Blast Fours as well. Yeah, I mean it, it was really fun actually. You know, I've never been to Alton Towers before um, at all. You know, just to the park. So when I got the opportunity to come and do the 10K and then obviously go to the park afterwards as well, it was like, you know, I was never going to turn that down. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of the run-through races. There's so many of them across the country and, you know, yeah, I've heard good things about them. So I thought, yeah, you know, this this sounds like a good thing to do on my way back. I like racing 10Ks anyway, so I had a look at the route and it was a bit... You know, a bit crazy, a bit different to some of the other races, but no, it was really fun. I mean, it's so unique to get to run around, you know, such an iconic place. Um, and then, yeah, you know, to to be able to get to go 
into the theme park afterwards as well. I couldn't recommend the race more, to be honest. There'll be plenty of people listening to this now and, you know, the 99.99 percentile aren't going to be on your level or going to be looking to do what you have done already and could potentially do in the future. With your coaching hat on, somebody looking towards their first marathon, what would you say is the number one thing that they need to be focused on? I mean, there's there's so many different things. Exactly. I think it depends, number one's difficult, isn't it? <laughs> it depends on on the person, you know, like what their targets are and what their aims are. But I think a lot of people get so nervous about what they're about to do that they kind of forget to enjoy it. And I think that's such an important part of it. Whether it's the training, I know that's not always enjoyable when it's dark and wet and cold. But you know, when you do get to race day and you know you've done the hard work in training, your long runs your interval sessions, wherever that might look like, you know, when you feel ready on the start line, you just get to enjoy that race so much more. And, you know, if you soak up the atmosphere of somewhere like London or Chicago, Boston, or you're doing like an iconic course, like maybe Snowden or something like, yeah, I just think it's really important to actually enjoy what you're doing at the same time. I know it's going to be difficult, but if you look around, everyone else is probably in the same pain you are. So just really important to kind of enjoy and, you know, bask in that feeling of, you know, running a marathon because not many people do it. Do you still enjoy it, mate? Because when it becomes, you know, more of a business, really, when you think about it, like you're in the business of running fast times, running big marathons, like, do you still enjoy it? Or is that pressure kind of, does it, does it, does it kind of diminish the enjoyment a little bit? No, I, I definitely enjoy it. You know, sometimes when races don't go well, you, you maybe don't quite enjoy so much. But, you know, I think it's really important to enjoy whatever you do, whatever your job is. You know, it could be something not sport related at all. But if you don't enjoy what you're doing or the people you work with, then there's, there's no point doing it really. So, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy it. And, you know, even the hard days, you know, it's still pretty lucky to be able to do what I do, you know, training whenever I want, really racing in these amazing places. Even if the race is tough, it's, you know, I know it's a limited time career that you're going to have in sport, so you may as well make the most of it while you can. How do you get out of the door when you do encounter those tough days? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I don't, I've don't. i never had a problem getting out the door. Um, it's just routine for me now. I think I've trained so much over the years that, you know, it's just normal. It's just part of my day to get up and go for a run. Um, you know, sometimes I think the difficult bit is the especially when you're injured and you can't just get up and go for a run, you're like, what do I do? <laughs> you know, I think it's a little bit hard in times like that, but motivation-wise, I've, I've never struggled really, to be honest. It's difficult sometimes. I think the fatigue outside of training, you know, maybe you've got plans on the weekend, but you're just totally like destroyed from 25 miles in the morning <laughs> and you're like, you just don't want to do anything but lie down all day. And I think a lot of people rel relate to that when they're doing their long runs for marathons. But yeah, you know, it doesn't matter what time you're running, you're still, you're still pretty tired. <laughs> Talk to me about this world record, because I know you were approached by S4C to have a bash a, a world record. The S4C, if you don't know, and you're not from Wales originally, is the Welsh language TV channel. Um, <laughs> explain exactly what it was and how it kind of came about and what exactly you did. Yeah, so in... Probably at the beginning of 2022, um, S4C approached me asking me if I wanted, they run a TV program once a year uh, where a lot of different people will try and break a world record. The world records vary greatly um, if you watch the program. So I thought, yeah, you know, I'd love to give it a go, but I had no idea what I could do. So I started to have a think and then the lady I was speaking to was thinking as well and came up with a couple of different options. Obviously, for me, it would need to involve some sort of running to give me a bit of an advantage. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't going to just go out and break the 100-meter world record. I <laughs> failed there. So I thought, what else could I do? I was thinking maybe keep-ups. But then that was too hard. I'm not good enough for football. But I got in a tennis racket, and I was basically doing keep-ups um, on that. So you've got to bounce the ball continuously for a whole mile, run the mile as fast as you can while bouncing the ball on the tennis racket. And 
you know, I gave it a go and I was like, yeah, I think I could do that. So I, I told her, yeah, I'll give it a try. So eight days after Seville Marathon last year, I went up to Cardiff on the indoor track and ran a mile, bouncing the tennis ball on the racket and managed to break the record running 532. So, yeah, I was pretty pleased <laughs> with that. <laughs> How Was there any training involved? I imagine, like, your peak marathon fitness at that point, you're not probably dropping in a, a, a double run on, on your <laughs> big marathon day with the tennis racket. Like, how are you training for that? So before Seville, I hadn't picked up a tennis racket for probably <laughs> about eight years <laughs> since I was playing when I was a lot younger. Um, not not any well, just down the park with my friends, that would have been. But yeah, then after Seville, I realised that in about five days, I'm going to have to try and do this. I did have a couple of practice goals. But obviously my legs are still pretty smashed after the marathon as well. So, yeah, it wasn't the best bit of preparation, but it worked out anyway. <laughs> hey, well, if, if somebody if somebody comes and breaks that record now, at least you'll know that there's more in the tank. Specific training block for, yeah. <laughs> for, for that. Got people telling me already I need to think of what to do next. But, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty cool to do it. And, um, yeah, you know, it's just such one of those random things that I never even thought to do. And so to... Tick it off was pretty cool. When, when you actually realised that, like you had done it, you you crossed the line and you'd run the mile. What was that feeling like? Because you just you just run Seville Marathon. Compare Seville Marathon to the finish of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, totally bizarre. I mean, you know, Seville. I think was so focused the training. You prepare so well for it, and then for it to go really well, you know, you're just buzzing but you're also so tired because you've just run 26 miles and then to do that eight days later I was really happy with it but it was more like relief than anything because <laughs> yeah. I had all these cameras and people watching me do it and if I just failed just like multiple times it would have been a bit of a shame but yeah no it was um they were both cool in different ways to be honest. When you're in a race like Seville and you execute the plan to what you want to do you run the time you want to what what does what does that feel like internally because you put yourself through an absolute you know rigorous whatever it is 12 16 24 weeks of training to get to that one point is is it satisfying is it a relief like what is that feeling yeah i think you know during the race itself you get you know feelings that it's going well I think in a marathon you always get ups and downs, you have good patches and bad patches. But luckily by that point I had done probably nine marathons, I think. So I had the experience of, you know, when it wasn't feeling so good or when I was feeling really good, not to get carried away and equally not to be like disheartened that maybe my legs are a bit more tired than I'd like them to be. So the experience definitely helped. But yeah, you know, I think you just can't get too carried away until you cross that finish line. You can be feeling amazing at 23 miles and then it all falls apart at 24 so it's just making sure that you stay relaxed get plenty of fuel on board make sure you're doing everything that you need to do um and then yeah you know when you take all those small boxes everything kind of comes together if you have a bit of luck as well and yeah it did on that day and then yeah when you cross the finish line for me it wasn't so much relief i was just really happy to run the time that i knew i could um it doesn't always work that way but yeah I was yeah just more pleased than anything else from somebody that is you know nine deep now going to be 10 deep what are the lessons that you've learned having run that many marathons to when you stood on the line for your first one I think it's you know a, a big one is just to understand what race you're doing you know if it's London the prep might look a little bit different to New York and the prep of, for that may look a little bit different to Snowden. So, you know, you've got to take into consideration what the course is going to look like. I think you've got to take into consideration what the weather is going to look like on the day. You know, if it's something like London, then that's not too much of a worry either. But if you're doing, you know, maybe one that's going to be really warm, maybe you want some preparation for that. Um, and then just being really clear with what your goals are beforehand. You know, I think if you're really clear about those things, you just know exactly what training needs to look like to prepare you for that. And then mentally, you can prepare yourself for it too. You know, I think if you leave a lot of things to chance and you're not really sure and you just 
you know, you'll get away with it in a 5k if you don't know what the course is like and it just catches you up. But a marathon is really hard, no matter what the course looks like. So if it turns out to be hot or hilly, you know, it's going to be a tough day more than likely. So just making sure that you've prepared for the for the race because um, they don't all look exactly the same. Obviously, you're going to do the mileage, but, you know, you don't need to put loads of hills in your 20-mile long run if you're doing London, whereas if you're doing Snowden, then I would strongly advise yeah. to put all those hills in. So just making sure that you prepare for the course a little bit. And I think mentally that'll help so much then as well, knowing that you've done that. Is there a flagship <laughs> result that sticks out for you? Apart from, of course, the world record, is there is there something that you like look back on as as the performance of your career so far? It's probably a couple. I think my first marathon was like such a big step up from anything I had done before because it just suited the event suited me so much more than like five k or ten k, which I was okay at, but certainly not going to any championships for. So to my first marathon, I won the British Championships, so that you know to do that was like a massive step up from anything I'd done before. Qualified for the Commonwealth Games and World Championships in 2017 from that race, so that really sp- springboarded me to, you know, a much higher status than I was before. Um, and then yeah, you know, a lot of opportunities have come from that as well. And then I think obviously the other one would be Seville, where I'm my personal best. 21128 um so yeah those two i think really stand out for me at the moment but i'm hoping there's more of those days to come i'm sure there will be and like you mentioned 2017 that was london right 2017 yeah. so going into that um and like you say there not really being much expectation or or pressure really from the outside i'm sure there was internally from yourself um crossing the line winning that british champ qualifying for you know a couple of major games what would what changed in in kind of like the environment around you following that race was because that you mentioned that there must have been a lot more opportunities yeah i think probably the biggest change was the way i thought about running myself you know i literally just finished university at that time i'd done my master's degree so i was at the time you know i was i had graduation in a couple of months but i was kind of looking for work really after university um you know i was applying for various different things but um whereas then when i did that race i kind of you know focused a little bit more on what running could look like as a profession and you know alongside it i then started a coaching business because it worked so well with running you know i can do that from anywhere whereas if you work in an office you're kind of restricted to the times you train and the places you can be during the year so yeah, you know, I think had I not done that marathon and had the result, then I would have taken a different career path. And, you know, maybe running wouldn't have taken such a focus. I would definitely still be doing it, but maybe I wouldn't have had as much time and things to train. So, yeah, you know, it was uh, it gave me a couple of opportunities to do some different things, which I probably wouldn't have done otherwise. Um, and I definitely wanted to kind of maximise any potential running career I could have because it's not something that when you're like 35 you can say oh I'll give that a go now because it's a bit too late so it was the right age to kind of give it a go and yeah you know even if it all ended today I've still achieved much more than I ever thought I could so yeah you know it was uh it worked out well I was I was going to ask that like what do you hope to look back on your running career as when you are you know, a little bit older when the when the career is done? Like, what do you hope to look back and think? <clears throat> yeah, you know, I think if you'd have asked me what I wanted to achieve when I was, like, 15, 16, it would be difficult to answer, but I think I would have already achieved more than I would have hoped, whereas now, obviously, I want to keep going to more championships. I obviously would love to make an Olympic team, I think, you know, any runner or athlete would say that, you know, that's kind of the ultimate dream. Um, So, yeah, you know, it's just making sure that, first of all, I get back to full fitness so I can kind of try and do those things. Um, So that's the most important thing for me at the moment is just to get back in a place where I can race at my best and, you know, put my hat in the ring for those things. But, yeah, you know, 
it's not I'm not putting too much pressure on doing any one specific thing. You know, I just want to keep enjoying myself, training, racing, and yeah, taking every opportunity that comes. And what do the what do the next few months hold then, leading up to that next race? What 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 does it so, look like? So in at the beginning of december i will run a half marathon in malaga and then i'll run a 5k on new year's eve uh back in wales um that's kind of a it's a pretty small town small race but it's a really old famous race and you know you get some good people turning up to that so that'll be good fun um and then yeah 2024 then i'll probably start off in january with a 10k trying to run a decent time which will lead into maybe another 10k or a half and then certainly in March then I'll do hopefully a fast half marathon before an April marathon. In terms of your co- the coaching side of things as well, what does it feel like helping others to achieve their goals? Because you're obviously going out there and putting yourself out there on the start line as well, but that side of things must be pretty um, rewarding also. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, there's so many different types of people you work with. Some people are trying to run maybe 2.30 for the marathon. Others are trying to do their first one. Others are maybe even trying to do their first ever 5K. You know, I think they're, it's so varied, the type of people you work with. And they're all just as fun as each other because, you know, regardless of the goal, they're all trying to achieve something and they're all equally happy, whatever that goal is. So for me to be a part of that is, yeah, really special. And you know, you kind of go on a journey with some people as well. You take them from, you know, maybe four and a half hours and then, you know, they break four for the first time and it's like, wow, and then they break 3.30 and, you know, kind of like myself, I couldn't believe that I'd run some of the times I had there in exactly the same boat. A lot of the feelings are exactly the same. So it's really cool and um, and special to be able to, you know, help people to achieve things that they didn't think they could and yeah, you know, you kind of build a relationship with some of these people then as well. And yeah, it's really cool to see them go and do these these amazing things and amazing races like Boston, Chicago, New York. So yeah, to be involved with running when you're not actually running is, uh, is, is pretty neat. I know we've we've kind of covered the the next stages and the, you know, going to do races to, to progress the career. But I, I, I wanted to ask, and you mentioned some flagship races there. Is there anything race-wise that is on the bucket list? Is there any races that you're like, I have to do that? Yeah, there, there's certainly a few. Like I think New York, Boston, all the marathon majors really are, are really special. But New York and Boston for me are, the, are probably the two that I definitely will do at some point. Whether I do them... You know, as part of the elite field, or it'll be years down the line. I'm not sure, but yeah, those are two that you know. I think any marathon runner looks at, and um, along with London as well. But being a Brit, that's kind of I did that as my first one. But I think those three, when you look worldwide, are the really kind of special ones. But then you know, you've got some kind of unique scenic ones as well, like Snowdon. Being Welsh, obviously, that would be a, a pretty cool one to try and win one day. And then, yeah, you know, Tokyo, other places, you know, I think you can tie a lot of these things in with, with travel and places that you like to visit as well. And, um, and yeah, you know, there's there's loads I want to do. I probably don't have enough time to do them all, but <laughs> I'd have to pick a few. We'll finish with this, mate. Do you always see yourself running? Yeah, I will always run to, uh, you know, a various extent, you know, even when I'm old and can barely move I'll still go for a jog but yeah you know it's just something I enjoy being outside fresh air all that kind of stuff is uh, is good you know I just love exercising in general to be honest so that was one thing when I was injured that I did find really tough just not being able to do what's kind of so normal for you so yeah you know I think it'll be really important for me to keep doing that you know for as long as I can because I do really enjoy it but yeah, I'll always be doing some sort of exercise, no doubt.